chair. Hi, how are you? Has everything been going? So I went to the cutest book club there ever was. <laughs> Everyone was so sweet, so cool. And one of the girls from the book club mentioned there was this event that's going to be going on. It's a conversation between Nana Kwame and Sarah Thinkham Matthews, who wrote All This Could Be Different, which I also adored when I read. We're going to be in conversation at Greenlight. But I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Who is she? It's 7.30 on a Tuesday night, but... <laughs> We're doing it. Very excited to see what they build together, what like sort of emerges from their conversation. I have been reading Trespasses by Louise Kennedy and The Sunsets in Singapore by Kahinde Felipe. So yeah, that's what we are currently and I'm also slowly, slowly, slowly moving my way through Roman stories. It's a lot like, okay, so Lahiri's writing is very quiet, but this is like very muted. So it's interesting. It feels even different from Whereabouts. Although I think with Whereabouts, she translated her own work and this one, it was, she was in tandem with another translator. So I think it's always interesting to see how that sort of changes the writing a little bit. Yeah, so we're gonna be in these within this vlog, getting ready for something very exciting within the next week. So I hope you'll stay along for what's coming. And yeah, so I guess let's head over to Brooklyn. <laughs> got the book <laughs> so I have been making so I was initially reading I think because I had just gotten off like the high of doing a reading challenge I was reading three books at a time and then I was like wait no what I said still stands and I need to do one book at a time starting to feel it I was starting to feel and at least I'm aware I feel like the first step is just admitting it to yourself <laughs> but I was really feeling like I wasn't retaining any of the information and I wasn't able to like think deeply about any of them I was just like vibing <laughs> don't want to do that anymore so we've just been in this this is about a teacher well it's about like a young woman during the troubles in ireland she works as a teacher during the day and then at night she works at a bar with her brother and we meet this character michael he's an older uh, he works he's like a i want to say freedom fighter but that's not what he is it's a name that I've, i had an experience before a barrister so michael is a barrister he's an older gentleman he makes eyes at kushla our narrator and there are sparks between them there's something going on. We just watch her and Michael dance around each other and eventually fall into this affair. In the interim, we are seeing how Kushla interacts with her students. I really, and this is very selfish of me, but I really like that she is a, seems like an elementary school teacher. And so they're sort of recounting or learning about the troubles as they're going on. And that's very helpful for me as an ignorant reader because I really don't know very much about the troubles, but having it broken down to that level is very helpful. So I think in terms of that, it's a very selfish thing and it doesn't need to teach me anything. Thing, but it is inadvertently teaching me a lot and that's something that I, I didn't really know about so and it also just makes me realize like damn it like we're constantly not fundamental in a good way but just like inevitable these like in-group out-group conflicts are no matter where you are and it's quite depressing one of her students father is viciously attacked and we're seeing sort of the tensions between the Catholics and the Protestants we're just experiencing the conflict at that time and watching the commentary with various people I am really enjoying it I don't know what this says about me but I love me and a fair so i'm eating this up sometimes it feels like we're moving at a pace where you haven't set us up yet but i for me it's okay like i'm just thoroughly enjoying this so i'm about halfway through this i am leaving the country on that sounds dramatic i'm traveling on monday but i'm going to be staying with my mom on long island on saturday and i have to pack and clean and do all the things you do before you travel so i don't know that i'm gonna have time to finish this before i leave i really would like to also this is horrible but this is very much due at the library and i I have it on my kindle but the font and type print on this is so pleasurable <laughs> that I want to keep the book but I feel like that's really mean because I won't be back until sort of mid-ish end-ish August so I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I don't I feel like I don't do many things wrong maybe I can have this one win <laughs> and the queue for this was also wild it was a lot of months that I waited for this book so I feel like if I return it and then wait to be on the queue again I'm not gonna get it till like October so I might I might just keep it I'm sorry to everyone who's waiting. I, I feel like there are various books circulating, so I'm not gonna feel too bad. I should probably return it. We'll see. We'll see what the judgment call is. So yeah, so I'm gonna go to the library. I have to return some stuff before I leave, pick up some currency, clean and pack. So within all of that, I'll try to move through this. I also feel like sometimes I read this and I get a little bit sad, <laughs> which is why I think I haven't been moving through it as quickly because it can get a little bit heavy. So that's what we're reading. That's what we're doing. I'll catch you sometime soon. <laughs> Thank you. 
my only sense of responsibility are my little plant children. I'm trying to makeshift whole irrigation system over here. I have cotton rope and two buckets of water. We'll see what we can do, but I'm gonna chat with you in a second. So as per the Googles, I have to put one end into the water bucket and the other end three inches into the soil. And then once the soil gets parched, she'll start like auto feeding, supposedly, <laughs> allegedly. So yeah, let's try to figure this out. First one is in. <laughs> I feel like I'm housing some weird layer. Everyone is on life support until further notice. One of the other tasks on my list of things to do is load the Kindle. I have not been so faithful to my Kindle. I like being physical with a book a lot of the times. And so when I travel, I'll put up with the extra weight just to have the book. But I foresee buying many, many books where I'm going. So I just wanted to try to think ahead a little bit. So I try to stay as faithful to my summer TBR as possible. I feel like making that summer TBR has been good in helping me keep on track and not just like buy things all willy nilly because we have a goal but I wasn't able to do that with my Kindle. I was able to find one book, Sunsets in Singapore by Kehinde Felipe. I felt like that was just an easy, summery, rompy book. And from what I've gathered, I've read about like 50 pages, it is. I'm going to make an exception and carry the physical, but it is a huge, this baby. And so as much as I would love to have this with me, I'm very grateful that I found it through NetGalley. I just want to go through the books, the vacation TBR, as we will. I really try to do fiction and fiction that is as light as possible. Do a couple of lip fics, because sometimes I do just crave that. And then I really wanted to do some essays and articles and see like if I can intersperse a few of the things that have been in an indefinite open tab on my iPad. So the books for this vacation's TBR are Permafrost by Eva Baltazar. So I read Boulder. I was kind of just like meh about it until the last scene and then I voice noted everyone I knew <laughs> in sheer shock. But I did like the writing style. I think Permafrost sounds like thematically sounds more up my alley and so we have Permafrost in the Kindle. We have Emily Henry's Happy Place. I keep dragging this book around me everywhere I go and I must read it this summer but I'm actually very excited to have that on my Kindle because I feel like that's a perfect Emily Henry for me is like a perfect vacation read so I'm excited to start that one over and give it a read we also have Trespasses by Louise Kennedy it left off in an interesting place so that might be a book that I maybe read on the airport I feel like I'm gonna finish it pretty soon because I'm invested I'm interested what else do we have so I have two Annie Arnaud's because Annie Arnaud is also just one of those that I can like easily slip into so I have a girl's story and I also have getting lost but those are the only two that NYPL had available on the Libby so <laughs> we have those two or no's. We have The Swimmers. The Swimmers by Julia Tsuka. And this was a book that was recommended to me by a friend for the 12 books, 12 friends challenge, which I have been a abysmal at keeping up with. <laughs> I think I only read one, but I'm trying to in the second half of the year be a little bit better about keeping up with those reads. So she's on the Kindle. Thankfully, she was available for immediate borrowing. What else do we have? We have Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante. This is one of the last fiction books I have to read by her. This one in Troubling Love. And I feel like it might be a good... I miss Ferrante. I feel like I haven't been in her in a long time. And I'm seeing everyone like pick up the quartet or finish the quartet and I'm getting FOMO. <laughs> I'm excited to just like be back in her world. We have Checkout 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. Reba was just speaking about this in her mid-year freak out and I was like, let me see if they have the pond because I kind of wanted to go following chronology in terms of like publishing date. They didn't have the pond. They had Checkout 19, so it's on the Kindle. The Sun Sets in Singapore, which I got off NetGalley. I think that's it. I think those are all of the books that I have, which is like a good amount. I don't I don't foresee myself finishing a single book, maybe one. I feel like that's a good mix of things to whet the various appetites. And then I have a couple of essays. So I actually have a newsletter. I had this one bookmarked. It's F Me Up Ferrante by the Linen Librarian. <laughs> I have started Started reading it and then I never finished it so I have that on my Kindle. I have a New Yorker article called The Year in Rereading. I'm a very big rereader and so I was just curious what the New Yorker had to say about it. I have How Should One Read a Book by Virginia Woolf which was published in the Yale Review. We have The Stuntman by Rachel Cuss which was published in the New Yorker. I think those are the only essays. Oh and then I have a Paris Review interview with Toni Morrison and another essay by Claire Zastanovich on Keeping a Diary. So those are the essays that we have for this trip. So I feel like we are 
locked and loaded. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna put this away. Uh, plants are done, nails are done. Clean the apartment except for this room because this was like the packing zone. So I'm gonna clean this. And then I'm gonna head over to Long Island. I feel like this is just you coming along with me on pre-travel errands. So I hope that's okay. <laughs> okay, one, I'm in a very crowded Costco right now. Two, I got my hair cut. <laughs> Three, I need to do an update now because I'm not gonna have time to do it before the trip happens. But there was, oops, there was this beautiful scene. Wait, this might be really silly because I don't think you can hear me. Okay, I'll be back. It's a little more quiet here. That's my mom. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're starting to learn a little more about the power differentials in her relationship and there are a lot of dualities within the relationship that she's trying to highlight so it's like server versus serve, powerful versus powerless. So I like what she's exploring there and there was this beautiful part where she was trying to capture the feelings that she was having and that she did feel happy but she knew that like at the end of whatever weekend they were having she was gonna feel sad and lonely and she knew that she was gonna be sitting by her phone. And so it was just like this happiness tinged with longing. And then she sort of had this moment where she was like discovering saudaji, that like Portuguese term, which like I feel like everyone sort of talks about. It's always described as bittersweet, but the way that she sort of laid it out. And I was like, that was so well done. So just for that scene alone, Reese Kennedy like that. friends <laughs> i have since the last time we've spoken done the travel so i'm in a new place but i did want to wrap up this vlog i did not unfortunately finish sunsets in singapore but we did finish trespasses we finished it on a full plane and i was unsuspecting i was not prepared for what happened with that book but essentially it's a book about a woman who is in this affair with this barrister and we're sort of moving through the tensions and the troubles and i thought what was really interesting about it was that the way that kennedy would say up the scenes was very newspaper like so she would give this like very distant portrait and then sometimes you would hear sort of the tick that you would see across a newscast so one man dead one man bombed so we sort of felt the depersonalized nature of those beginning descriptions and how they slowly became like very personal and to see that was really striking i think it was really successful that these events that we often sort of regard as these tragedies that are happening to other people she made very personal and I think that it sort of underlined how it was just a period that really did impact everyone. I thought that was just like a really successful way to depict what was going on at this time. And then there was also a tangle in just how all of the characters intermingled and the inevitability of tragedy once people find each other or cross paths. Again, I, like I said before, I was not prepared. <laughs> I've been talking to some people and they're like, yeah, I could, I called it. I definitely was not, I wasn't expecting it. But yeah, it was a fantastic book. It was definitely more of a slow burn. But yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed Trespasses. I'm glad I read it because it's been on my list for a bit. So I think I'm gonna pick up Milkman and Claire Keegan's book, Small Things Like These next. So those are sort of the Irish books that I have my eye on. Also, if you have any good recommendations, please let me know i'm like very much into writers from ireland i feel like the last couple of books that i've read by irish authors have been books that i would put pretty high on the list of books i've read so far this year so yeah if you have any recommendations please let me know but yeah i think that's going to be it for this vlog hope you're doing well i hope your summer's been treating you well let me know as always if you're reading anything good if i should pick it up too but until then see you <laughs>